hello and welcome. Today I'm going to teach you how to use these pastel colors to draw this close up of an eye. It will be really fun and it'll be really good for us because we can learn how the details of something up close looks and that will inform us when we're drawing whole faces and whole bodies and everything like that. So it's always a good idea to do a study like this to learn as much as possible about an eye or maybe an ear. Um, so this will be a lot of fun. I'm really glad you're here to do this project with me today and it will be done with charcoal and pastels. Let's get started. Here we are. It is time to do gray all over again. So take your willow charcoal, let it land on your paper, and let's gently go in circles to coax this on. Remember, we don't press with all our might because there might be some hard uh, part of the natural wood that could scratch your paper if you press really hard. So you want to coax it on gradually and in layers and make sure that you get all the way to the edges. It does not have to be solidly dark. You can see there's a few little white spots left like a uh, static TV of old. Um, but you don't want it super, super light either. So you want it to look pretty much like a composition notebook on the front. All right. You will notice I don't have my gloves on today. I want to just prove that it works without gloves. And I'm feeling very moisturized because uh, it's not the cold, cold, cold winter anymore. And so my hands are not as dry. And don't put lotion on your hands before doing this, though, I will say, because the lotion is oily and can cause uh, your artwork to have permanent splotchy bits on it that you do not want. So that's rubbing it with just with my hand. <laughs> um, and you can also rub it with a napkin. And again, I'm not rubbing with all my might because uh, we don't want that to just all come off. There, that's what we want. All right, next. Last time I taught you how to do the middle by doing the cross from the corners. So we will repeat that because that was kind of a fun bit of knowledge, right? And then we will go back to our old school and do our plus sign right down the middle. So now we have like a snowflake kind of pattern. This is gonna help us. It kind of looks like an eye test, which is kind of funny, because remember, when you put your eye up to that eye machine and it like goes in focus and out of focus, it has this kind of pattern on it. So we're gonna use that to help us make our eye. All right, so here in the middle, that's where the center of the eye will be. And so we're gonna start off by creating a circle in the middle. And you can see how I'm using sketchy lines to find it. We really want it to be a circle. And it's um, probably about the size of a half dollar or a quarter. We don't want it to be too huge. And you can see I can use my finger to go in a circle again. And I kind of will erase it back in. So I'm going to go back down. By the way, there's no shame in tracing something that's round if you need to. So if you have a half dollar, you can kind of use it. I mean, it's a little bit bigger than a half dollar, but anything as a guideline. So that is going to be the pupil or the dark aperture opening of this eye. Um, after that, we're going to do our iris. So our iris is equidistant around that, right? So kind of come around. And we want it to be a circle. So 
but I think I need a little shorter on this side. And do yourself a favor and make sure that it's not too huge. See, so you have other stuff going on here because um, we don't want it to be bulging and just be about this part. We want to be able to do the whole um, area around. So doing a close-up is very helpful because you'll learn a lot. And then when you're drawing the whole face, you will have spent some time really looking at an eye. And all my friends that like to go on the internet, please do, because this is a great thing to look at on the internet. All right, so we're all over there, and it looks pretty close to equidistant. Bring it in a little more. Yeah, okay. So now we're gonna erase those lines there. So kind of looks like a sunshine. Ta-da! All right, this eye will be looking straight. Uh, the bottom lid is sharing this face and it's gonna come over, but it will not come all the way up to there. And then this one is going to come over there, but it will not come all the way up to there. The top of the eye is relaxed. This is a relaxed person. Um, so it doesn't go all the way up to here. It's going to come a little across it like this. So it has that kind of look. And let's wait to erase it because we might want to perfect this a bit. And so... We won't erase it until we have it drawn just like we want. So this is going to come down to meet this point like this. Okay. And then on this side, it's going to come down to meet on this side. And this is going to have like a little number one there. It's not going to come to a point. We're going to pretend like the nose is on this side, on the right-hand side. Um, and so that's why we have more of a point over here. Uh, but we're human, we're not a robot, we're not industrial, so it doesn't come to an exact point. And so that's important to note. All right, that looks pretty good. So now we can erase all of this out of here. And we're gonna get rid of that now that we've positioned our eye uh, quite nicely there. All right, so that is just the opening where we see the eye peeking through, uh, but there's some more details that happen in there. So we have like our, our little tear duct and our little muscle that goes around our eye. So it's kind of like putting spider webs in a corner to get those two in place. Then we have the actual ridge of the lid because the eyelid has a thickness to it. It's not paper thin. So it's going to have a ledge when you look at it this closely. A ledge. And it will come all the way to this spider web to be able to see that ledge. And we'll see a bit of the ledge there. Uh, but you won't see so much of it here because this is kind of like turned down a bit and kind of tucked under. So. Next, we're going to have where the eyelid goes back and behind the brow bone where the eyebrows will be. And it will follow this shape. And then it kind of leaves it. So it's going to go that way a bit. Okay, so we have that shape. On this side, it's going to come almost all the over. We'll, we'll use this guideline to help us. We're going to come all the way to there and this is going to go up and over. So there's our eyelid on that side. Alright. That looks cool. It kind of looks mysterious with these diagonals uh, but we'll get those out next. So let's just use them to get our last bit of kind of brow shape going this way and 
that way. So this kind of looks like, yep, that's good. All right, goodbye lines. We don't need you anymore. So this is all we really need. It's there. And then we will erase the helping lines here. And we're going to put a little curve like that there. Awesome. We can now trace this with our compressed charcoal. All right. Make sure that you truly have your compressed charcoal. Uh, ours from the library is a square shape. And then I've decided not to include all of this part. So I'm just going to put a little bit on that. So um, here we go. So we're going to follow our brow line. We're going to follow our eyelid line. We're going to put a little curve there, a little curve there. Follow our inside eyelid line and on the bottom edge and the bottom bottom edge. I'm going to trace my inside circle left, right. Inside, side, and then the little parts in here. Okay. Now, I'm going to wipe it with a tissue, of course, or a Kleenex or a paper towel. Uh, but before that, I'm going to go ahead and build up the blackness of this pupil. I've built that up and I'm going to take my finger and rub that in first. This way any dust is pressed into the vacancies in the tooth of the paper and it is well used before we move forward. There it is. Nice. Yes. Okay. So I smeared it on purpose so it wouldn't smear by accident. So here we go. More smearing on purpose. It doesn't smear on accident. And that is the look that we have so far. All right, now I've kind of over smeared and that isn't as dark anymore. So I'm going to go again and get a little more in there. It's interesting because in art, we try to avoid very, very black, solid spaces like this. And the reason we do that is because black in a painting will be like a black hole, it, like the light will go in and it kind of gets sucked in and it looks like an acme hole. Um, and usually that's not a great thing. But what's funny is the pupil of an eye actually is a hole. So um, this is completely fine. So we're good here on that. And we've got that. Now we don't have a ton of black on here. Um, so it's not really necessary to spray it. So we can just be like, okay, I'm ready. And we can continue on with a little bit of finding the lights on this picture with our eraser. So I'm ready with my half of a super black eraser. It used to be white, right? Um, and I want to erase out the whites of the eyes. And you notice that like I didn't really clean it off that much, so it's possible to get a pretty white um, removal without having to clean that eraser off. Look at that. You can hear the sound of it 
rubbing off the surface too. Um, so if I go very gently, it doesn't come off. So I'm really back and forth, back and forth. You can use circles. So it's a pretty good amount of pressure. Right there like that. There we go. Nice. I'm going to tap off the eraser bits. And then I'm going to put my eraser away because I don't want colors on it. Because colors are more likely to show up again when I don't want them to. So I'm just going to put that away because I don't need that anymore. Let's start in the middle with our Prussian blue. So I'm going to go around. Oh, it crunched. I'm going to go around my pupil with a nice circle there. Just like that. And I'm going to use like the square edge of this. To come out from that circle. And I'm actually going to rotate my paper because if I tried to reach around, I wouldn't be able to get that same direction that sunshine. I would have like a flat side. And the only true way to get it to truly come out is to actually be pulling from the same direction every single time. So this is very helpful to get that part going around. All right, next I am going to outline out here on this edge and this edge. Notice I haven't done any blendy blendy yet. All right, we've got that in, in position. Now I'm back to the right way. Yes, my eyebrow helps me stay in the right direction. And I've got those chunks because that one is kind of hard and crunchy and stuff comes off. So I want to dump those off so that they don't come back and haunt me. All right, we're going to go with a green eye today. Uh, so now I'm going to get my palm green and I'm going to go like little sun rays coming out here on this other edge where the other color we put on the boundaries are. Just like that. And I know it's a little hard to see because the paper is gray and it's kind of a gray green, but so it's out there all the way around. And let's get our very light gray color now. So this is gonna bridge across both of them. So it's gonna go from the blue into the light green. And again, I'll have to rotate. Those very thin lines coming across. It's both on the Prussian blue and on the palm green as it goes around. It is worth it to keep your hand floating and to go all the way around by rotating your paper. Okay, so now we have that. All right, and I'm just gonna use my finger to pet it, like I'm rubbing in the direction that I drew those. Okay, and again, rotate to blend those. Now you can see how very warm that black is because it almost looks like a burgundy compared to these very cool um, blue greens. Okay, so I've been all the way around like a sunshine. Now I'm gonna go up on the tip of my finger and trace the edge that we did dark blue. I 
and you'll notice I continuously am moving my paper so that it's not awkward from my shoulder or my wrist and I can get that smooth following of that line. All right, my eyebrow is up again, so I know where I am. And let's do a bit more of this kind of dark blue stripe here around the middle, this curve. And let's use a bit of our compressed charcoal just inside to do a circle there too. Okay, and then I'm going to take my finger and follow that circle around. All right, we have that. And let's get a little bit of the light gray now to do uh, some highlight. So we're going to put um, some highlight over here on our eye and a little highlight there. So this is like the light is in the room shining on that eye. We might do more later, but that's good for now. Okay, next we're going to find our dark rose color and we're going to come over here to where we have these two lines. So I'm going to put a little bit here, a little bit here, and kind of come into this corner like that. And so gently color that in, in that area. And I'm going to similarly get some on this side, on that lid there, and here. Okay, so that's in place. Then I'm going to use my gray color to color on top of this and go all the way to that second line. And hey, I still had green on my finger. Okay, goodbye green. Okay, so we blend that in. There we go. And a little gray in there and on there to blend that in. Notice I'm making, I'm following the curve feel. And it gives it like a dusty rose feeling like that. Okay. I'm not going all the way to the eye. I'm keeping my kind of eraser bit. And let's see what happens if I take a clean paper towel and back up a little. And it just makes it softer. So it's a more gradual. I back up to there. All right. That makes me very happy. All right. So we're going to get our yellow out. Okay. And we are going to put some yellow down here. All the way to this corner. Notice how I use the side of it. Side, let it fall. I'm going to use the yellow up there and even up in there. So it follows right that kind of brow. Notice I know where my eyebrow is going to be, but I am still coloring the skin there. I'm not going to leave it empty and then come back and try to get an eyebrow to be there. So put a little yellow here and a little yellow here. Okay. There we go. Those are all the places for the bold yellow. Now for our rust color. Okay, so we're gonna put some rust under this eyelid here. I'm again I'm using the side. Gonna follow that line this way. And there'll be some on this edge over here. And outside of this marking that we made over here. So this side and down like that. Got that nice orange tone going that way and maybe just a little bit not too much right there okay and we'll go up 
on the inside of this lid too. It might be a little tricky to see this line. We don't want to lose it because we're going to need it. So we'll go on both sides of it. But know that it's still there. Don't make it go away. All right, and I'm going to put a little of it on the gold there. And now we're going to get that rose, dark rose again. Right, we want a few, we're going to pink up some of the tones here. So a little pink there and a little pink. Yes, we want a little pink in this ridge here too. Run up that way. And a little pink up here on the forehead. All right, we got orange, we got yellow, we got pink. Oh, let's put a little pink right here too. Okay, it's very nice. All right. Now, this is where it probably seems a bit strange. We're gonna get our green again, and we're gonna put a little green here, a little green here, and a little green there, All right? Okay, now let's take some of our compressed charcoal. You know what? The compressed charcoal might be a little bold and you might be alarmed. So let's switch back to our willow charcoal because we can be gentle in our application because it's more of a dark gray. We're going to go in. Let's see how I'm coloring in this crevice with some dark gray. And I'm going to come around and go in over here. And just graze it up a bit. kind of in place. Now let's get our very light gray out. So our very light gray and go across here and across here and up and go over to here. So that's that way and on that part that we didn't outline majorly, and there. Okay, let's see, yep, and oh, right here on the eyelid. So it's coming in front. I think, I've been thinking about this part, so let's do a little yellow. and a little of dark rose. And then let's do our gray there. There we go, that looks great. Okay, so we have a lot of color here. And so as we blend, we wanna kind of follow the shape of things. So in this corner, you know, imagine there's a nose over here, right? Um, so we wanna kind of follow in this direction and kind of go around where I had originally drawn a bold line, but then changed my mind. So this part is more shadowy here. And we'll go in that little, we'll follow that line for where that eyelid goes back in that crease, okay? And then while we have this color on our finger, we will go on the bright side of this eyelid. And then we're gonna go this way on the ledge that we have of the eyelid. Now I'm trying not to go inside the eye at this point, right? We did that first, so we won't have to go in there. I'm gonna blend this. Watch how my fingers are going in this direction. And then these are gonna go up, 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 up. Because that brow bone is higher and closer. So I'm gonna go up, 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 up. 
I'll do that. And then these will go across. Like that. And then I'm going to follow that crevice again. Boop. All right, that's looking mighty nice. All right, then we're going to go, we're going to follow this shape going this way. And then drag this down. And there we have a pretty good eye, and we're ready for some details. Let's start with our willow charcoal again, so we get some gentle details first. Uh, so we're going to go back into this crevice. We blended it, and so you'll notice it barely goes on. The paper has been rubbed and blended, and it's the paper is getting pretty full, so that's why it doesn't go on easily. And you wanted to get a little darker and see how this side kind of like spreads out more because we got more of a shadow on this side. So I'm gonna go in there and get that a darker color. And this one comes down on this lid here. Down on that lid there. Okay. And then we're going to go back inside to get this tear duct kind of thing. Following that. Okay, so we got that part in place. And let's start thinking about the directions of our eyebrows. So they're gonna go that direction, right? Because they're going that direction. So you can see I have a great place to rest my hand. And these brows tend to be shorter here and then longer as they go. We have our little guideline to keep us in our space. We don't want him to look like Groucho Marx, so, or her. So we want to have these be a little on the gentle side. And then these tend to be a little farther apart. So we got our brows in place and they tend to go up a bit. Right, so we got a little short guys and they're going up. So spend a lot of time looking before you draw on those guys. Now, our eyelashes. All right, so the lashes on the bottom start on this line. They go over and down, over and down. And they're different lengths and when you get to straight on they tend to kind of crisscross and come at you a little bit and then some of them might be going more little in that way right because they're not so bold in that one so those are the lower lids now up here they're not coming from here they're coming from here so and they come down and then they go up. So this is where it gets kind of crazy because it's like, how is this possible? And they come down and they go up quite high over that crevice. And we're doing it first with this and then we will make some of our favorites darker. So that way you have a chance to practice and get used to coming down and going up. They're like a bunch of backwards letter J's. All 
right? And so now they're going to start heading in that direction. So you've made it past the center part. But they come down, they come down and up, down and up, down and up, down and up. All right, that's probably enough of those guys. And so we've worked on our shape of those eyelashes. And now we can get some like mascara on them because now you're going to pick your favorites and trace them. If it doesn't look right, don't trace the ones that don't look right. Trace the ones that do look right. Right? Okay, I'm going to get a few of these little guys. Few of the ones that come down and go up. And you can have a few. Whoops, she got a wild eyebrow. I missed. Okay. You can have a few eyebrows, but you don't have to do the eyebrows if you're uncomfortable with that. All right. We got those in place. And now we can use a little bit of our very light gray to put. Some sheen, a light mark there. I decided I wanted more sparkles in these eyes. A little bit of moisture here in the tear duct. A little light edge there. Some light kind of coming up on this brow bone. And All right, there. So this exercise will help you pay closer attention to eyes. Let me put some right there. Uh, because now you know it's not just a circle, that there's stuff going on. And this is very helpful to get that to happen. So we're gonna get that highlight up there. There's a highlight down here. Right next to there. Oh, that looks good. Okay, terrific. Very fun. Now we're gonna go spray it. Okay, now we're gonna spray our finished eye. So you're gonna take your hairspray and you're gonna go across, up and down, and around the four corners and leave it flat to dry.